Hello, my name is Paul Zacharias and I'm the owner of Spectrum Coatings. By the way, I'm the only person who will be handling your mirror when it arrives at my facility. I'd like to take about four minutes of your time to explain how the coating process works here at Spectrum Coatings. Keep in mind that this video is by no means a comprehensive study into my entire thin film process, but it will give you a good general idea of the complexities of optical thin film coatings and why the process that I've developed is superior to the standard way that mirrors have been produced in the past. Okay, let's get started. The deposition process begins by evacuating all of the air out of the vacuum system, pumping the chamber down to a pressure of approximately 2 times 10 to the minus 6 torr. This pressure is obtained by two types of vacuum pumps, the last being a high vacuum pump. Pressures at this level can only be found in outer space, which is almost a perfect vacuum. Waiting for a good vacuum or low pressure is critical in producing very pure and highly reflective mirror coatings. Once the process pressure is reached, pure argon and pure oxygen play a role in preparing the glass surface for deposition, promoting adhesion and creating a strong bond between the glass surface and the arriving flash evaporated aluminum. The mirror rotation motor is started and spins the mirror continuously throughout the entire process. This ensures a very even, uniform coating in reference to the overall layer thickness across the entire mirror surface and complete oxidation of the thin film layer. Now that the system and the glass surface are ready for the deposition process, the aluminum layer is flash evaporated, the faster the better, less chance for the metal to absorb minute amounts of any gases that may still be present in the vacuum chamber. The rate of evaporation and the total film thickness is precisely measured and controlled using a 6 MHz oscillating quartz crystal. The rate of evaporation and the final thickness of the overcoat layers are critical to the final performance of the optics. After the deposition of the pure aluminum layer, oxygen is run through the low voltage high current ion source creating an oxygen ion beam consisting of ultra pure oxygen having a kinetic energy of 60 electron volts. This ion beam subtly bombards the suboxide being deposited at the mirror surface, fully oxidizing the film as well as giving the atoms and molecules surface mobility to fill in any gaps and voids as the film grows on the surface. The energy contained in the ion beam aids in producing dense, hard oxide coatings much like the bulk material that it was evaporated from. Keep in mind that the energy in just the evaporated material alone, without an ion source, is less than one electron volt. This is the reason that trying to manufacture hard oxide coatings without an efficient ion source or very high substrate temperatures produce only soft, porous overcoats. Oxygen ion assisted deposition also increases the index of refraction of the high index material used in my enhanced aluminum and max R coatings, increasing the ratio between the low and high index materials, therefore increasing the overall reflection of the completed design. Other coating companies produce a layer of SiO or silicon monoxide, a suboxide of SiO2 which is quartz. Silicon monoxide is brown in the visible spectrum where you use your telescope. Here is what SiO looks like before it is evaporated in its raw form. Which would you choose if you could? Absorbing silicon monoxide or clear hard quartz? the decision is as clear as the quartz itself.
Thank you for taking time to view this video presentation. It was my intent to educate those folks that have asked so many times just how these optical coatings are produced. I hope I have conveyed the basics of the process in an adequate fashion. Clear skies, good optics, and God bless. Thank you.